Podcast live from the Caxton OG. Bit of a diff run. That guy on my left. You sro- normally I shoot away to you too, OG. I'm Justin Hoddle. As I'm talking about the OG, Willie Widamoo Mason. Widamoo. Widamoo's catching on too, OG. Yeah, a couple of people messaged me, a couple of Moldy boys. A couple of Moldy boys uh, hit me up on the streets here. Yeah. Widamoo, Widamoo, Widamoo. How good. <laughs> I love it. Well, we're here at the Caxon. Obviously, a little bit later, the preview show, we're going to get into all of the Round 9 preview. We're going to talk about Uncle Gus. He's blast Bradman Best about his little trip to Bali. OG, we'll get to that. Yes. Um, big news around the Dragons, overcoaching, Zach Lomax dropped. Um, that'll be one of the topics we get to. But before that, just want to give a massive shout out to not only the Caxton, but the bloody brilliant Beers Boys. Boys, he's doing great things. Thank you for your little studio, your little setup here. Um, are they Queenslanders? They're Queenslander boys, yeah. They're, they're, they're surrounded by Queensland memorabilia. I yeah. feel awful. Yeah, it's a good little just, sport. Because you know why? It just brings back awful memories. <laughs> 2004. Well, let's get into it, Suncorp. Your, what's, your, what's, your, what's your worst memory as a player, OG, and then your best that you had up here at Suncorp? <sighs> well, I've won, I've won... Only out of all my Origin games, I've won one game. At one game? One yeah. game. What year was that? And do you remember the, the oh, what part of the series? Jeez, I think it was like 2000 and. Maybe four, I think something yeah. like that. It was, was that uh, Freddie? Freddie's year? Yeah, it was Freddie's year. I, th- I think don't don't quote yeah. me on that. Maybe yeah. 06 or something like that. But um, the worst one, I think I, th- I think I explained it when we got. I think we got pumped by um, Queensland. I was talking about the the red calling them rednecks and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that one. And then the dude like and threw the rum, rum and coke on me, and then like it was just it was just demoralizing. Was that the Justin Paul game? No, 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 it wasn't poor. It, no. was it was the game where Hainsey scored that mad try. Oh, the kick down the sideline? Yeah. The chip and, on the inside? And we were like, we were winning at yeah. half time. Yeah. And then we just got fucking smashed in the second. And like, as I said, like, every single go- every time I touch the ball anywhere at Suncorp, it's like a boo, boo, boo. But like, they were constant, man. It was consistent. It was the loudest boo every time. Every time I got the ball, it was the loudest boo. Every time I made a tackle, it was the loudest boo. Yeah. And that's, what, that's, that's the difference. I mean, like, I love our New South Wales fans. Always have. But I'm like, fuck, Queensland are different. Yeah, they hit different up here. Because you know why? Because Queensland, up- by far, the most like where you get booed. Like, because you get you get obviously get a lot of noise yeah, wherever you go. Yeah, but not that consistent. I get, I get booed, yeah, it's for like five here. minutes. Yeah, it's consistent. It's talking eighty. You're talking eighty. Eighty of the and best. And like, it's not like they the last bit's like it's like fucking it's exactly the same as the first one. <laughs> but it wasn't even just like the boos of like when I got the ball. If I made a tackle, if I got penalised. If they got a penalty, mm. it was just like putting it all on me. I thought, I thought it was like, none of that shit gets me anyway, but it was yeah. just like, um, yeah, if we anything, had, we probably pumps you up a little bit. Too, yeah, right? we had, we had like a love hate relationship, like, uh, Queensland and, yeah. and myself. But, um, I think, you know, they respected me as a player. They knew I went, I, they knew I played the game fair and they played, I played hard. Well, and I think they respect that. Uh, a basketball player, who would I just watch? I watch Trey Young in the NBA and he gets mm. booed at Boston all the time and he takes it as a sign yeah, of like respect. Yeah, like Trey Young, fake joke. You know? he, they don't boo everyone, you know? So yeah. you must be doing right if you're getting booed. Yeah. That's the uh, the mindset behind it for sure. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Round ten pu- uh, preview um, again. Like and subscribe. We're at the five k mark. We're flying. Things are going good. Ag. We're able to do shit like this off the yeah. back of all that subscriptions, the comments. Um, go on, give us the reviews. Apple, Spotify. It's all grouse. It all helps us. Um, Want to sh- just give a massive shout out and a gratitude towards our partners, the Tab, who yeah. have flown us up here for the weekend, looking after us. But also our partners, Body Science, as well, who are mm. locked in for the year with us as well. They're the OGs what they do. The OG of the tab industry, the OG of the supplement in- industry, um, and we're the OGs. Yeah. Even though we've been doing it for a minute. I'll give you, you I'll give you guys a couple of tips, though. Eh? Yeah. Like I take the hydroxy burn every morning. Especially, you know, you go on the, these little junkets. Yep. You know, and like you, Are we gonna get into it now, OG? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll show you like amateurs how to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> you rookies. So I, I usually get a spoon, yeah. right? Just Oh, straight on the tongue. Give me some of that. I'll come with you. Two of the best. Two of the best. <laughs> we're gonna get in tr- we're gonna get in trouble for having pow- powder at the Caxton here. Mm. Oh. Dry. Put the water in. Rinse it around. Done. Mm. It's done. That tastes nice. That's it's nice. That's super berry. So Shred when you super berry. This is this is by the way. This is just um, I was talking about the. Uh, the supplements, obviously, body science. This is the hydroxy burn shred. Um, currently available in Coles Chemist Warehouse online at bodyscience.com.au and in independent supplement retailers. I dare say if you're watching the footy, 
uh, over the weekend. You might see this in the background. BSC, big partners yeah. of a lot of teams that run in the NRL. And this is what get the boys fired up. That That's just good. got me fired up for That's this. Good. Yeah, it's good, me, man. It's giving me a little... Whew. Strange up. That's the way to do it, AJ. Eh, and everyone knows about the, the pro team. That's a little... I, I had a little... Uh, yeah, if, you, if you're in your weights, little, if you're in your weights, if you're morning, in your weights and all that kind of stuff and you're trying to diet, that's the best thing for you. Just currently available in Woolworths, online at bodyscience.com.au and in independent supplement retailers. OG, uh, let's get into it. Obviously yeah. grateful for, for our friends BSC and, and the tab, but let's get into it. Just a couple of stories. Um, we'll talk more footy um, as we're going to get out and, and get amongst it at the Caxon with a bit of meet and greet after this. Yeah. Um, but topic one, mate, find another job. Phil Gould, last club over mid-season barley trip. So Uncle Gus not happy with what's, what's happened at Newcastle. Uh, a couple of the NRL boys, I believe Bradman Best is uh, a player who's already over there. Yeah. Um, and then Paul Kent uh, obviously added to it. The thing about it is this. It is a professional game, and I get the need for players to get away from the game, he said. But we're in the middle of the season, and the Knights were given nine days off after the Parramatta game, which they got thumped. Uh, obviously, that you know that plays into it as well. Nine days, just eight weeks into the season, which I think is extreme. OG, where do you sit on it? It's, it's a hard one, right? Um, you know, you're in the middle of the season. You've done pre-season. You're going okay. The Knights are going okay. Um, you do need a bit of a like a mental like Fresh pressure. Enough. Yep. But you know, even if he did go to Bali, why the fuck put it on social media? Yeah, that's a big like, one. Like this is the younger like this is this young these young kids mentality. Like if we're, if it's not on social media, I didn't go. Like, just slip under the radar, get to Bali, turn your fucking phone off, and shut the fuck up. I don't know. I no don't know. one cares. I don't know if the big fella's got a missus, but surely he's fishing. Mate, he's I don't, throwing give, the line I out, don't care, but just like... He's throwing the line out and caught poor Kent, though, and, and, and oh, Phil Gould. He's, he's caught Gus. <laughs> he's, he's caught Gus. He's, he's caught, big, caught Uncle. Some fucking... Some big Marlins there. <laughs> um, you know, and, you know, as soon as Gus said that, he's got, he's got a right to say that. Mm. And so probably... A uh, little heads up to any Bulldogs players when we get to the bye. Yeah. Don't go to the fucking Barley. <laughs> when you're on the Marcus, make, sure, make sure you're not hitting up yeah. the fucking Barley. Just don't – you don't have to advertise it because you could have got away with that easily over for Barley for five days, refresh, come back, re-energise, all that sort of shit. I get it. But, like, even me as a player, if i got the bye, I'm not fucking going anywhere near Barley. Yeah, you know, stressful is to, tr- to go through airports now and get there and, you know what I mean, you got to spend, what, four or five days. It's like, that's not, that's not fucking – that's not relaxing. Yeah. You know, more clubs really go, you know, Wayne was big on that. He used to give a whole, the, the buy was the whole week, right? Yeah. Get a fair bit off. and But he wants you to be like spending time with your family, you know, just like. Recovering. Recovering, all that sort of stuff. Look after your injuries. You know, like just say Braden Best has been playing not too bad this year. He might, yeah, have, yes. he might have a few bumps and bruises. In years I, past though, he's been bumps banged and up. Bumps and bruises, but I don't think he's, there's a, you know, there's um high performance over there or physios or doctors or mm. anything like that. There's no one over there. So all he's going to be doing, everyone, know, everyone knows what you're doing fucking Bali. Jesus well, Christ. I mean, like, what are you going to do? You're going to say, you're not staying in, is he staying in Samanyak? Is he staying in fucking Changu? Is he, is he out at like Uluwatu? Like fuck, Bali pumps. Yeah. And it's like, he's a young single kid. So you can only put two and two together. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's not a good look, but, my main point is, why did you put it on social media? Mm. Why? Yeah. Just fuck off. Just go under no the radar. No one cares. Because there's going to be plays. Like when you're not winning and when you're not killing it and when you're not playing good, this is when the people come out. Yeah. They come out and they've got every right to. They've got every right to. You just got to play it smart, kids, man. Just like, I don't give a fuck where you go. Just don't put it on social media because everyone knows where you're going. Now all the Knights fans, all the Knights fans are going... You don't deserve to go. Why is he going to Bali? He should be like training more. He should be doing this and making all these other excuses up because they're not coming first. They're not Penrith. They're not the Brisbane Broncos. They're not the Roosters. Okay, well, would that make a difference? So Nathan went over last year. This is just a question thrown at OG. He went over when he's suspended, but he's Nathan Cleary and, yes. they're, and they're going to win the comp. So it's and he's suspended. And he's suspended. And he's suspended because he's playing. A, he plays a shitload full, of footy. Years. He plays a shitload of footy. He plays tests, origins. He plays origins. He plays. He deep runs into the you know, grand finals. The three years in a row. Yep. Go, Nate. Freshen up. you want him to freshen up. Yeah. Bradman Best is 22 years old. Mm. What are you freshening up about? Yeah, haven't played finals. What are you freshening up about? Yeah, haven't played Origin. Yeah, I'm not, mate, I'm, I, I like Bradman Best. He's a good kid, but, mm. like, make better decisions. And even – I'm not against him going to Bali. 
I'm just going against kid, posting. Smarten the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Like Jesus yeah. Christ. I've, I know. I've known people when we we're in um. Like even when I was playing for Newcastle and stuff like that, they'd they'd go to Bali. Yeah, or well just don't but Jacob Hosting. They just they <laughs> no Jacob Hosting. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, uh, yeah, it's just a lesson learned. Like just yeah. don't do it, you know. And then you got guys like Gus, fucking big dog Gus. He's highly respected, one of the most respectful people in the game. Respected people in the game. If he comes at you, that's not, it's not a good sign. Yeah, and you just got to not it. a good sign. And you you got to cop it on the like, chin too. And what are you doing when you're over? You just don't fucking fly back. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I wonder what the go is like. How do you, know what what do you just go? Yeah, sorry, boys. But like, right, boys. Okay, you know, and I don't plan. think, and I don't think he's the only one over there. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I don't know. But the you know what? Those other that. those other guys are like, oh, Persian shit. Yeah, that's it's right. smarter. Mate, and that's the thing. That's the people that you surround yourself with. Like, hey, Bessie, I don't think I don't think you should post that, bro. Yeah, that's the thing. Hang uh, out with people who got your best interests, not fucking. Oh yeah, we're going to Bali. Well, I think you save know, that shit for the fucking end of the year. Then I you go ballistic. I think he had his. <laughs> I think he had his own best interest. Like I was, I reckon he's fucking <laughs> fishing, but he caught a big marlin. Uh, I'll chuck yeah. this in. Glass he got out. the wrong. He's trying. <laughs> he's looking after. A he's, he's looking for a bit of flatty. He's looking and he for a, a marlin. Looking for a parrot fish. <laughs> <laughs> and he got the fucking Gus fish. <laughs> the big soy. The big flounder. <laughs> the big flounder, <laughs> Gus. Um, look, I will say this. Glass yards it straight away. I don't want to be um, poking holes into Bradman Best because when I was in the Super League, mind you, it's different. It's a Bro, Super League. it's different over there, man. I went, we would fuck off to Barcelona and <laughs> Ibiza on our day, on, on a weekend. A day off. On oh, a, actually, when we had day, recovery. On a, on a day off, we'd have recovery. Uh, on the uh, recovery, we'd be like, what are we doing? Let's go to Barcelona. Yeah. It sounds like a great idea, you know, because it's not that hard over there. It's like, you know, we, we respect Super League and all that sort of shit. But, like, you're living in the south of France. We're having a good time. You know what I mean? If we yeah. want to go to Ibiza, hey, you get to Barcelona, guess what? It's a half-hour trip to Ibiza. Yeah. So, you know what? A couple <laughs> of little drinks, inebriated, a couple of little wrong decisions. Aren't you supposed to be in recovery, OG? Aren't you recovery? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't I supposed to, yeah. Wasn't I, wasn't I supposed to be doing physio? Nah, mate, I'm in Ibiza. Um, yeah, so a couple of things. Obviously, uh, yeah, no glass hours, but, you know, it's a different landscape. I, well, I did, you know, throw in the, the Cleary comparison because I think that, you know, the context of that matters as well. But that's the perfect thing what you just said then, Hoss. It's a different landscape. Yeah, yeah. It's totally different. We can speak from experience and, like, just, you know, what we've done, but, like, it's fucking totally different. I, I, f- I, feel, I feel sometimes when we're talking, we played 40 years ago. Mm. You know what I mean? It's only, like, 10 years ago. Mm. Like, guys were still doing this, but, like, the fabric of the game has changed. The landscape of the game has changed. There's more pressure on these kids. you just got to make better decisions. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm not against you going to Bali, mate. But I'm against you posting the shit. Mm. That's like, a fair point. I just don't like that. And you could you, you could be in Bali. Don't give no me one, ammo. No one would know you're in Bali. No yeah. one would know you're in Bali if you didn't post that shit. Mm. Get that out of your fucking head, young kids. Like No one gives a shit what you're doing. Why are you posting stuff? Little dopamine hit. Oh, you get all the likes. Oh, yeah, enjoy your time. No one gives a fuck, man. Just what about, go. Just what, about if, what about if the porky pig's looking good and you just want to fucking just little flare up for the fucking, for the girls over there? He's looking Tell ripped too. Yeah, he's he he's, he's, saying he's yeah. looking good. Yeah. Just jumping off the fucking uh, diving board at Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> just reverse, uh, reversing. Yeah, I'm with UOG. Look, again, Glassy Houses, I've had a few trips, but mind you, it was in the Super League. A uh, bit of a different kettle of fish. I think yeah, it does matter with But we're context. different. We're different like because we weren't about that social media stuff. Yeah, yeah. If we're doing stuff, like I've been to Ibiza two or three times, no one would fucking know it. Mm. Well, if you're there, you'd know it because you can see you're coming from a mile away like yeah. you did in the middle of fucking... Yeah, yeah you saw it. <laughs> I can you know, see you're even, coming from 200 even metres away. Like, you know, even the in fuck ba- is OG even doing over here? Even in Barcelona, <laughs> even in Barcelona <laughs> yeah. no one knew that we're going 10, no, 10, no, 10, no, 10 or 15 best. times a year. No, it was the best. 10 or 15 times yeah. a year. Jeez. What about... Oh, so someone messaged me too. Shout out to Birdie who was on the uh, the buy round and uh, a couple of my mates messaged me and they're like, fuck, Birdie's throwing you under the bus. He talked about us being the awesome foursome on the potty with uh, James Graham and how we fucked off to Barcelona all the time. Don't worry... There's uh, no love lost between uh, um, us and Birdie. We've, I think we've told this story many times. Birdie's so. on the Mount Rushmore of yeah. Perpignan. Birdie's a fucking undercover too. He's, yeah. The only thing is Birdie's acting like he's a, he's a golden child. Yeah, because he got because they he, retired him and gave him a job. Yeah, because he was sorted over there for a couple of years. But Birdie, don't get it twisted. You were if you if you weren't coming down to Barcelona, you're down at you're a at, naughty boy, Birdie. You're, you're at karaoke bar in in Cannes for with sure. Your, uh, with your voice, <laughs> you had half a voice. You would have been all right. Um. All right, on to the next one. Just before we get in, it's more of a uh, changes at the Dragons. Obviously, there's a lot going on with the Dragons, mm. a lot of head, head noise. Um, 
Zach Lomax has been dropped, and there's been uh, rumours or there's been chat around that his goal kicking has played into it too, AG. So I'll give you some of the stats, right? What's going on? Sharp suit is staggering decline exposes Dragons over coaching. So the boys were talking about Lomax had converted at around 77 to 78% in each of his past four seasons. This year, he's dropped all the way to 60%, OG. And he's got Chook. Daryl Halligan's been coming in and kick- kicking with him, and he's dropped his tee. Mm. Um, surely, I know it's... You're not getting dropped off. Surely you're not getting dropped for goal kicking, right? Um, you know, with with I think last year we had our concerns with Lomax and the way he carried himself, but you said you ran into him during the off season yeah. and he's, he felt like he's he's uh, taken a lot of accountability about you mm-hmm. know where he's at in his game. I've I've watched every game this year of the Dragons and and uh, by no, by no means he's been perfect. I haven't watched a game and gone apart from goal kicking where it's actually like legitimately cost him. And that's you know that's tough because you're a goal kicker and that's they're a trying to blame here. the loss on him. Um, I guess it's because it's two points. That's well, petty. Is it is it is is Lomax the problem at the Dragons or is there is there some, is there more to it? Because like I said, right, he's got a bit of shit in him too. As much as you said you've met him, right? He's a I've I've, I've got a I've got a feeling he's one of those guys. He's he wants to he wants to be it. Yeah, he wants to be that dude. He wants dude. to play Origin. He wants to be that dude, and he yeah. knows he has the talent to do that. I just don't and think he's he, I don't think he's in the right system. Yeah. He's playing left center now. They've swapped him from the to left the right. to he's from right, right to left. From right to left, because he's got a mad flick on that right, but he didn't really execute it last year that well. But he still has the talent to be on that right center. Um and now you're putting on the left. It's just like he's changed his it's changed everything about his game. Um I just think that goal kicking is such a little fucking it's important, but like fucking hell, like don't you can't drop a kid on that. That's bullshit. Mm. You know, I hear rumors and murmurs out of out of the Dragons camp that you know a lot of a lot of players aren't they're not happy. Mm. They get minimum ball if you're a center, if you're a strike center like Zach, probably averages like eight touches a game. Yeah, that's not good enough. That's not enough, especially for a left center. Yeah, you always yeah. go. The, yeah, right. you always go left. Yeah, you know, right to left, left yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's and that's what I thought that when he when they did swap him to the left, and I've met him a couple of times. And he, yeah, at the first the rap on him on him was he was he was he was too cocky, he was too confident, he wasn't a team player and all that sort of shit when he was mm. young because yeah. he's fucking he just thought you he know, hit the scene. He hit it the happens. Scene, he hit the scene hard. Yeah, exactly. Him, yeah. But now and he's I was young. critical of him last year too, especially he's, with the Frizz thing. He's humbled himself. And he's he's all about the team and all that kind of stuff. But like you keep swapping this kid around, and you're not giving him enough ball, man. Like. They just play really one-dimensional football. I don't think the system that he's in at the moment suits the way he plays. Yeah. You know, they need a coach in there that's a, bit, a little bit more structured. Um, yeah, I just... And it's going to happen. Like, Hook's obviously not going to be there next year, but, like, it's going to... They've got well, some talent, man. They have talent. Well, Mace, not even next year, does Hook make it past... If they lose to the Tigers, does Hook make it past... I don't reckon he makes Magic it. Magic round. After if Magic the Tigers round. Get him, if the Tigers win this week... Fuck, mate. The hook might be coming out. Yeah, he's hooking himself. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, yeah, I, I, I just don't see it with Lomax, with, you know, other performances that are there. I know sometimes it's, you know, coaches don't necessarily do it because he's the out-and-out out reason. But when you make decisions, whether it be Sam Walker at the Roosters a couple mm. of weeks ago or L- Lomax uh, this week, it just sends a bit of a – like it's a statement dropping in a yeah. way. And it sort of puts everyone else on alert. Whether that's going to work at this point for the Dragons, I don't know. I don't think it will because, you know. Who they replace him with? Hook's all but gone. Um, Max or Matty Fiongai moves Fiongai. to the centres. Yeah, okay. And off the wing and uh, Ravala will come back on right. the wing. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it ends up and it pans out for him. But, um, Not good signs. I mean, like when things like this happen, it's like you, you, are you trying to get rid of him? <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Bless Pardon you. Um, well, that hydroxy burn's got me fired up, baby. I think, um, yeah. Well, what's the message here that they that you're sending? Just say if you're a young kid like Zach, he's been playing okay this year. He's been all right, and then all of a sudden you drop him, and then you talk about his goal kicking and stuff like that. It's more than goal kicking. Yeah, it is. Like you'd yeah. be thinking there. You know what? What am I doing here? Mm. Like I'm, I might go somewhere else. If he's in a fucking good system, mate, the kid has got potential to play for New South Wales and Australia. Yeah, that's the scary thing. Yeah, so right lose, system, right lose. coaching. Yes, he, he hits back. He'll bounce back. If he right. gets coached by Wayne Bennett, even if he plays right se- right center. You know yeah. I, mean? I think it'll be fuck. dependent on who the coach is next year that you yeah. know, um, comes in. Whether maybe you know, Des, what, Des. What I think Des might be the front runner there. Yep. 
All right, OG, let's get into it. Round 10 preview. These odds are accurate. As of 5th of May at lunchtime, we are filming live here. Not live, which is not coming to you live, but we're here at the Caxton. And again, we are grateful for these odds from our friends at the tab. OG, kicking it off tonight, your mm. team, the Bulldogs, against the Canberra Raiders in the first game at 6 p.m. Uh, the Dogs are $2.50. The Raiders are $1.53. Head to head, you get a five and a half start, OG. Uh, how do you think the boys will fare? You know, good win last week. Yeah. Um, Canberra also with an with a with a, an emotional yeah, win and week. So, um, is there benefits in playing a Canberra team that just had all that you know energy and, and emotion mm. into the game with Ricky and and obviously Jack White were very emotional last week. Is this a good time to play Canberra or yeah, a bad is. time? Yeah, I think I think it is because you know, like coming out last week, Canberra was like trying to set a standard. Like, okay, we lost Jackie Boyd, and this is how we're going to go forward. And I'm not sure if they can replicate that for 10 rounds. Mm. You know what I mean? You're, going, you're playing off emotion. You're doing all that kind of stuff. Canberra are a fucking good side. They are. They are really good. They play, they play hard-nosed football, smash-mouth football. They take you on physically. Tarpanay, Big Papa, Hudson Young, Elliot Whitehead. Like, they've got some dogs in that yeah. team, mate. And they've got the horse, bro. Fucking horse. Just doing, ah. what, he, just doing what he wants. Um, he's playing good footy, man, through the middle now. Footy, yeah. He's starting to get a little bit of a tip yeah. on, a little offload for no, the Jackie White try. He's that dude, you know, like um, he, they trust him and he works hard in defence. That's all those little things that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, the kick, sp- kick pressure, all that sort of shit. Um, but our boys, like I think that was a def- defining moment in the year. You know what I mean? Like we, we said it at half time last week and we're like, if we get these It was fuckers, a big win. If we get these guys, this could be the belief – Really should start happening. As I said, yeah. round ten, you sort of know what you're at. Sort of, you start figuring out the DNA, the culture, what we're what we're made out of. And I think we did. I think we have. In uh, you know, we're a gritty team. We hustle teams. We fucking go at it. We just give. We jump on those loose balls. We fucking we scrap. We were gritty. We fucking we just turn up for each other. Yep. That's what you fucking want your team. That's got to be your DNA. And that's what they are. Yep. Do you know what I mean? We got we got no kick out. No excuse. No kick out. No Karaz, no Fox. Is Karaz back this week? Because it looks like Karaz, third, third yeah, degree Burns saw, is out. Know, and shout out to fucking Burnsy. That epitomizes what a fucking bulldog is. Grade two medial, first fucking hit up, and he pretty much won us the game. Yeah, that is fucking unreal. I gave two, him. A, two, I saw him at train yesterday, all that on Wednesday. Yeah, I gave him a massive hug. I said yep. that's fucking awesome. I said. Obviously not you being out for eight weeks, but I said that's fuck that's fucking great, mate. Great effort. Do you know what I mean? I said that is that is fucking unreal because I remember seeing him at half time. I was next to him when he's getting a strap. I said, "How is he?" He goes, "I don't know, bro. It's pretty fucked." You know, he, that turn and chase to get the, you know, the Fionn in the in the in the, in the corner the wing. He's on one leg, but like Lomax misses the kick. Throw, that's throw, the difference. Throwing the ball over like hitting Avs. On Shout the out chest. to Avs, like fucking killed it. You know what I mean? Like. And even the other one when he come out and he, he flicked that ball to Avrilo when he yep. fucking scored. Yep. You know what I mean? Like that shit is like, how would you do that? Well, the body, the human body is a wonderful thing and so is the mind. And he's like obviously mentally strong and he got through it and he was, I reckon he was our best player. Well, Cam Serrato said a couple of weeks ago when you are going through a tough period with mm. all the injuries that you had, he, the beauty of it is you go through, when you go through a tough time like this, you're about to find out yep. who wants to be a bulldog. And I think Braden Burns uh, for sure has shown that he wants to be a bulldog long term. You know, and um, you know, I'm not sure if Kraz is coming back. He got through the not the captain's run, but I mean, like the two days before a game, you need to get through that because yep. it's a very well. You've got Ocobo on intense, the bench as well, just in case. You know, um, Franklin Pelle back too this week, AJ. Big Frank, man. Yeah, I just want Frankie to play play consistent football. He could be anything. He could be a pain Haas. Yeah, and the big one for the Raiders, Xavier Savage comes back onto the wing. So yeah, he's um, been out, he's been out. Shout out to Sebastian and Chris for keeping him out. Because yeah. Xavier Savage is supposed to be their guy down in the Raiders. And a lot of people were, you know, 50-50 on uh, Chris. Myself, I was. When I sent him named the fullback line, how's that going to work? 12 weeks ago we did that. He'd done his draw against us in a trial. Yep. The first trial. So I felt sorry for the kid because he had a, it looked like he put on some weight and he was really doing some um, some good things and he looked sharp. He does look bigger. I sent him in New South Wales Cup a couple of weeks ago. He, he looks bigger. Because yeah. right now, if you're a fullback, you need to be big mm. and strong. Yeah. Because what they what do they do? They just hold you up and try and drag you back. Yeah, that's you've at like, least got to get to now. um at least Dylan Edwards sort of chunkiness, right? Yeah. So Dylan He's Edwards was lighter. Core, yes, you know I mean? like got a good Dylan, base. Good base. You got to get, get you got to have that short base because when they're coming up there, those big boys they have a job. When they go people at home, when they kick chase and uh, the play ones and play twos, <clears> they're not there to bash the shit out of you. So if they hit you on your back, you're straight up. Yeah, they want to grab, they want to absorb, they want to get under hooks, pick you up. 
It's called ball, yeah. tall, mall. Yeah. That's what they do. And they try and get you back about five or six metres. And it's fucking demoralising. Yeah, fucks play right? two and three. Fucks Especially it up. Especially if you'll play two or three. And old mate's got to get around the side, get around the corner, the winger, and everyone's there. Like six blokes are ready to fucking pound your head in. Yeah. So these wingers and fullbacks, man, and centres, they're tough as hell. They're, play, they're taking some of the toughest carries in the game. Yeah. If, so, you, don't, if you don't have a strong carry on you know, one of your wingers, then you, you, you're not... You're falling behind in the And NFL. I think Xavier's uh, savage. He's not a big boy. No. So expect us to kick his way. Yeah. You know, like he's going to be, go. be under the There's pump. a bit of an insight if you're watching this. This won't you know, come Sebastian, out you know, uh, Sebastian before the Raiders. Yeah, exactly. Look, so look Sebastian Chris is a really direct runner. But, you know, he's not a positional. He hasn't played fullback his whole career. So his positional play might be out of... <clears throat> might be a little bit out. With a kicker like Burton and, you know, the way that we kick chase and we put so much emphasis on that... You know, we're going to try and get it. We're trying to get. We're trying to get them okay. the back five sort of thing. You know, so because they're forwards, hey, they'll fucking go. Big Papa, Tarpane, Hudson Young, Elliot Whitehead, they go at it, mate. They don't care, <clears throat> and it's very, it's it's one dimensional. They play a little bit of footy off um, Hornsborough with a little bit of a block play when Not they go right, when they go right or when yep. they go left. He's their connect man. They go to Jack Whiten, but they just fucking run hard, tackle they hard, and they, look, and they look for an offload. All right, OG, I'm going to go two dollars fifty about. The dogs, you can't have gone it, but I like the plus five and a half with our friends at the tab. Next game, Manly versus Brisbane. Head to head, the Woo. Bird Gang. Uh, underdogs, $3.70, and deservedly so against the Brisbane Broncos team, to, despite last week of red hot doll 28. The line is plus 11 and a half. Uh, Mace, some of the late news. Tom Travojevic is set to return, but they miss out on Jakey through the middle, I think is going to be big. Yes. And obviously, Payne Huss and Ezra Mam coming back in from their one week suspensions. OG. Big task for the Manly Seagulls up playing the Broncos again three years in a row. No, Jake Chaboyevich is massive. I don't I think, think, I don't it's think people understand. Like Payne, if Payne Haas ran at Jake Chaboyevich, Jakey's hitting him. Yeah. And he's taking care of it. Yeah. There's no leg drive after that. You know he what might I mean? be one of only a couple in the he's comp the only that one. can. Cam, Victor Radley. Cam Murray will get Cam him. Cam Murray. You know what I mean? Like where I don't think any of these other guys can stop Payne Haas in his tracks. Mm. Jake can. And to miss him, you know, you're going to have what. Uh, Paseku has been playing good. Yep. You know, but like he doesn't hit like Jake. No one hits like Jake. He's the best, one of the best defenders in the game. So I don't think, I think they're going to struggle through the ruck. Payne's had a week off. You know what I mean? Just to fucking refresh. Yeah, that'll be good for and him. He's going to come anything, out of positive yeah, for the podcast, right? Like come out of the blocks. I know they, last, they lost last week. He would love to be playing against South, but like, you know, he's going to go at it. He's going to go at it. It's going to be hard. Like, you know, your DCE, who was it, Cooper Johns? Yep, Cooper Dronks goes into six. Uh, Shuey's obviously still out. A lot of news around him. Um, what about that? You know, we talked a little bit about it in the mm. review. There seems to be a heap of noise around Shuey at the moment. Yeah. He potentially becoming available. Um, you know, needs to work on his consistency with training. Where do you sit on Shuey? Well, like, he, just, he, needs to take, he needs to take game series. Yeah. That would be my advice to him. Just sacrifice your diet, your hard work, get your body right for the next 18 months, and then you will get the be- you'll get the best out of him. Well, he didn't go on the World Cup too, OG, to no, do that. Looks stay fit. back and train. He looks fit, yeah. you know what I mean? I just think... Injury-wise, he just I'm can't I'm not sure. Did he, did he re-up last year? Did he re Yeah, he did. I believe he did, on yeah. big coin? Yeah, he would, he'd be on decent coin. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. he's getting I paid... He's getting he was pa- paid within he's knowing that Fozzie was going. He's getting paid on potential, right? He's getting paid on potential. And I just... I want to see the kid do well. Because yeah, he's got a skill set. He's got a like, really, really high skill set. Unique. Very unique. But like he just needs to play the game that... the. That, Traditional, if he wants to play 5 8, you know, the no look and all that sort of stuff, I get it. It's, it's beautiful, it's fancy to watch, but like he just needs to be playing tough. I want him to play tough. I want him to take the ball. I want him to take the line on. Like he's a big, strong, mobile 5 8. Like I want him, I just want to see the potential, like at least reach his potential. So, yeah, you know, I think he could be one of those guys who slip through the, slip through the gap at uh, Manly and go to another team. As I said, different structure, different systems. Yeah then you might get the best out of him. Mm, could be. You know, so I, I hope that. That's me being, you know, all for Schuster. But, like, I don't know. Like, yeah, I can see why they're off him because he must be doing some lazy shit off the field because mm. you've got some people coming out from fucking woodworks just bagging the kid. Yeah, that's what, like... I, I'm like, wow, well, like, I, I Bozo's daughter and the fucking... Yeah. Players going. He just needs to really concentrate. Like, there's always holy. a bit. There's always a bit in it though, with in and around the uh, the higher ups at Manly for sure. Um, I think Man. I think Manly will struggle in this one. Do you think? You know, you played at Manly for three or four years. Like that, they're trying to get rid of him. I wouldn't be surprised. 
with all the noise that happens. Generally, when there's smoke, there's yeah, fire with Manly. You don't say shit like that unless no. you want to get rid and, of it. But there's always been. I thought with the new system that they've set up with basically starting fresh, whether it was with Nestroff and uh, and um, and Siebes, mm. that they were going to get rid of all this like in-house fighting and there's still signs of it. And it's going to take – I think there's still a process. Of, they're getting it all out. But, um, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me because you say it all the time. Best abilities available yeah. to you, OG. And, and if he can't stay fit – and on the other side of it, he's fucking super talented, yeah. and he's so unique in the skill set that he's got. That I think there'll be teams, um, you know, like your Tigers, um, he under needs Benji, a good coach. something like that. He they would love to get a, love to get a hold of him. He needs to be mentored and he needs to be coached well. It's very important at his age because he does have a particular fucking skill set that's very high and it's a it's a bit above everyone else's. So hopefully they treat him right, man. Mm. You know, I, I would still stick with him and just like let him just try and. Get him to learn how to be a pro. Yep. It's a fucking hard thing, you know what I mean? Like, well, most of these guys, most of these young kids don't know how to be a pro. They just think, footy, go out there and play. It's like the diet. It's you, all you still got to learn, right? Yeah, you're still you're young. Gotta, yeah, 22, dis- 23, discipline, you discipline in life, you know what I mean? Like, everything needs to be sacrificed. So, hopefully he understands that now. Hopefully he's one of those kids who just go, you know what? Fuck you. I'll show you guys. Yep. Not, oh, well, fuck, you don't like me. I'll go, I'm going to go get a release. Mm. Fuck that. All right, I'm on the Broncos with our friends yeah, at the Tabham, Dolls 28. Um, probably a bit short and not something you would want to jump on, but, geez, I think the minus 11 and a half will get the job done as well for the Broncos. I think they uh, put a little bit of score on them. All right, the first game is Saturday, kicking off 3 p.m. The Waz, the Warriors OG versus Penrith. Do they bounce back? $3.60 about... The Warriors and a dollar twenty nine. There he is, the big go. Drizzler, our friend at the tab. Boy, boy, Come and jump boy, on, brother. Boy, 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 Mate, there's no the knights are on the bye, Drizzler. Yeah. What's doing? Well, Here we go. Get in, brother. Get in. Well, let's get in. Well, the, they've obviously got oh, the bye. Really? Yeah. Well, we've got to support him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we've dressed up. Well, I've dressed up as a knight. This is what they make me do at the tab. <laughs> Willie, are you gonna dress up? We know you play for knights, are you gonna dress up too? What's going on? Yeah, you first. Yeah. yeah, they got me first. Yeah. And they go, look at look at the back. Oh no, it doesn't even go all the way oh, up. No, so and um, it's Black Knight too, and, oh no. and respectfully, not ra- no racism, but it's the, the colour of the show. Well, I don't know what the punters reckon, but what do you boys reckon? Should I, I like it? Yeah, Dress I like it. It's, like it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Are you going to go the whole day with it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But we're going to need a few more white claws or beers. I tell you that. I know, right? I know. But boys, we, we pumped up. Oh mate, I'm pumped. Let's go. Let's, Let's go, go, brother. Let's get after it. The Drizzler. We're here. The, Drizzler. the biggest talent at the tab, baby, and oh, he's rolling so, with us. Stop it, boys. Go, go the Knights. We're here for you. We know <laughs> you're in Bali, but we're here for you in spirit. <laughs> yeah, the Drizzler. Awesome, brother. All right, Mace. 3 p.m. game. No, we do not have the Newcastle Knights because the Drizzler's here with us at the Caxton. Yeah. We've got the Warriors, the Waz, $3.60 Luki, against the Penrith Panthers, who are $1.29. The line is plus 10.5. Mace, can the Warriors keep this one close? Got a few few wins from last week. Penrith coming off back to back losses. Um, yeah, I mean they will. I, mean, I think their culture that they're set now they're very competitive. Yep. Chance um, Nicol Clockstack's back. Tohu Harris looks to be back. Both oh, have really? been named. Yeah. So a couple of big ins. Uh, Penrith Panthers. So I think Penrith. Their sister. Fisher Harris comes back and Lean you missed last week as well with the calf. Right. So two and, big ins. And for them they're, as well. big, they're, they're they are massive, massive ins. You know what I mean? They, they get that whole team rolling. Fisher Harris is their spiritual leader. He fucking loves it. He loves contact. Maori boy, yep. he's fucking going against the the Waz, no Warriors, <laughs> the Warriors, um, and he'll be he'll be looking to fucking set the standard there. I know, I know, I know. It's like playing against the Warriors. You know what I mean? Like when you when you're Polynesian or anything like that, yeah, hits you go, different. yeah, it hits different. You got to go out there and you got to be the best forward. So I'm predicting that he will be. Yeah, obviously he's come back from a hamstring injury. I think. Some yeah. sort of calf, like just yeah, like a muscle, some, some sort of strain. Yeah. Anyway. He'll be coming back. Leota will grow another leg. I think Leota's been holding the fort fucking pretty good. He's a gun. Yeah. But you get Fisher Harris back. You get Leanu back. Like, He's bro, been... They're animals, man. Like, they're a different beast. They have that winning culture. They will not lose fucking three in a row. I'll bet a billion dollars on these guys. Yeah. He did. A, he had a grade two ligament tear in his right knee. So it was right. like an MCL or something, mate. Yeah. Well, it's um, good. That's probably better than he did it like than a soft tissue injury. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those probably generally so they repair five better. Five weeks. Um, yeah, I think um, for sure, like Mace, you mentioned uh, Moses Liotta. He is well and truly shown his top value five prop in the game. Uh, as a top tier prop in the game Easy. with Fish. Because, like, as much as I've always respected what Mo, Mo, uh, Moses has done, Big Moss, eh? they call him Big Moss. Big Moss eh? um, the, the beauty of it, of having a guy like Fish Harris miss footy, is you go, all right, 
Well, I always knew like Moss was that guy, but I oh, actually know he is that guy. Yeah, like he's he's, a, he's able to take the 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 momentum and and the mantle as the, as their leader because you you know Fisher Harris is um, so aggressive and you see you know you see him take all those hit ups and and Mossy comes in and jams people but um, well, yeah. Moses is probably the best hitter in the game. Yeah, he'd be out of everyone in the game. He'd probably be him and whew, out of everyone in the game. I'm not running straight at him. Olaquatu? He's a big boy. I'd rather run at the big boy. Yeah, like, yeah. But the, like Moses is about probably six foot. Yeah. Perfect tackle tech to tackle me yeah. at six five. Good size. And eh? same as Victor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, a little, bit of, late, a little bit of late footwork on both those guys. Fuck that run straight. Yeah. Really not silly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Warriors, I think um I'm you know, I like the Warriors, uh, mate. So I think I love what they've been putting up. If Don't you dare. I'm close. You I'm, going? Yeah, I think yeah, fuck it. Go the Warriors. I'm on the Warriors 360. I do love the 10 and a half with the tab for sure. So if you're having a punt and you see this in time, just chuck that in your little multi for tomorrow. Um, and I think they make it close. I've just seen enough from the Warriors this year. I know they're not the team of the last couple of years. No, I, I definitely know that. I don't think, and it, I don't I, think, I don't I, think it's going to be 46 to 10. Yes. I just think it's going to be pretty close. But I just think with the, the Fisher-Harris, it just has that presence. Lienu got that presence, Leota, then you bolster up those fucking bench, mm. the bench spots, the starting spots, then you got all, you, you nearly got your full deck. Yeah, full deck. It's, gonna, it's, it's fucking hard. And they'll, you know, they don't, mate, that co- they don't lose two in a row. They Did, definitely don't lose three. three. Yeah, this be three in a row. So let this me will, look. This won't be happening until since 2015. So Penrith, they lost, obviously lost against the Tigers the week before. I'm pretty sure they lost as well. Yeah, they did. They lost the Rabbitohs. Yeah, there you yeah, go. They're not going to lose three. All right, I'm on the wires head to head. I'm going to have a crack. They're going to be my roughy of the week. Moving on to the Battle of the Ocean, the Sharks versus the Dolphins. OG dollar thirty about Cronulla, three dollars fifty still getting zero. Says respect on the Dolphins, but geez, that line has to be appealing again. Mace eleven and a half start and minus eleven for the Sharks. Uh, how do you see this game? Dolphins obviously with I mean the Sharks obviously with a statement last week, but Dolphins just don't go away in Pretty games. Sure, do they? the emphasis on this week for the Dolphins would be what. Can we start Starting better? Well. <laughs> Can yeah. we start better? For sure. Can we not get twenty six nil down or, or twenty six nil and uh, eighteen nil down? So I just think the Dolphins they have that they've built they're building something there. It's quite special. Yeah, the DNA I agree. of the club, the culture of the club, the culture. This is going to be a very close game. Cronulla is the form team of the comp. Yep, of the they, last couple of yeah, weeks, they for sure. Are fucking playing well. They got Fanukan back. They're going to miss Brandon Ueli. Yeah, so Hamlin Ueli outstanding. Braden Hamuel, Hamlin Ueli is out. But you've uh, got Big Royce, Royce Hunt, Royce a.k.a. Uh, Mini Wren. He goes yeah. into the front row. Uh, Cam McKennis then pushes, uh, starts at lock with Dal Finucan is a big back. In. He's, he's back as well. Yeah, they don't um, lose much there. For the, uh, for the Dolphins, Tessie New, Anthony Milford and Mason Teague all return from injuries, respective injuries that they've mm. had. Um, well, Cody Nicarima has been moved to the halves. He's been playing outstanding. No, sorry, no, he has. No? And uh, our boy, Valens Tafare. He looks like he could be playing for uh, Mudders Lee, who's going to miss the game for the for the Dolphins. So, where do you see this one going, Mace? Do you think the Sharks will be too strong, or do they keep sorry, it? Sorry, side note: Have they got the most Mudders in the comp? All right, let's have a look. Hamaso, not a Mudders. Jermaine, nah. you and Aiken, nah. no. No, Mudders Lee, yeah, Branko. Mudders Nikarima for sure. For a little, for a little guy, he's got a little Bromwich mudder. easily. Kenny, Kenny's there. Milford, Kenny, yes. Kenny Herman, S A S A, yes. Yeah, Wallace. Mudders Wallace. Yes. Mudders Lem- Lemuelu. He's, he's Con- Connolly Lemuelu has got a fucking bit of Mudders. Kenny Bromwich was my captain for Mudders United yeah, a couple of years ago yeah. and he loved it. Um, <laughs> but Valence Tafada, the OG, Triple OG, he could go one game straight into captain of the Mudders United with one <laughs> game filling in for uh, Brinko Lee. But I just think, nah. fuck. Oh, Cron- you know, hey, Cronulla's, Cronulla's they're they, going to put him to the sword. Yeah, you think? Yeah, I think yeah. too. I think they're flowing at the moment just like Nick Hones' locks. Well, Nico and was on the show the other day, right? And he was pretty confident. We're like, Dolphins? He's like, he didn't say much. He didn't have to. He's, yeah, he's, uh, he knows they're going to be he's tough. Got, he's he got a certain level of confidence at the moment, doesn't he? they're going to be tough, but they should get the job done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they've got too much class, and Nico's playing fucking... If he doesn't get that 14 jersey for New South Wales, or the six, or whatever the fuck it is... He's we're, a lock. We're kidding us. He's a lock for us, 1-7. No, I wouldn't say that. He's wouldn't say that. Oh, you don't think? No, I'm just saying. No, just, Kevin. I just, I just know... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a Kevin. Um, I just know like what New South Wales selections are like, but like they've got to pick him. Like, how the fuck to. didn't he get on the Kangaroo Tour last year? Oh, yeah. See, that's that's what I'm like. You know, like why? Yeah, Dally M. Dally M. Can't killed it. it. 
Kill, but and it's not it like it was year. one year. He actually was killing it at the Storm Fuck. the year before where it got to the point where like, holy shit, he's way too good to be playing at the Storm and not starting week to week. So he's got to go yeah. somewhere else and get big money. Yep. Uh, and happy that he got re-upped. Um, shout out to him for coming on our potty as well. All right, AG, for me, this is the game of the round. 7.45, Saturday night, Melbourne Storm versus South Sydney Rabbitohs. They played about five weeks ago. The Tab have got Melbourne at $2 as an underdog, slight underdog, and basically a coin flip against South $1.80. The line is just that, minus one and a half, dollar ninety five about South. So people don't mind the one-point start for the Melbourne Storm. OG, I'll get into a couple of the ins and outs. Um, actually, pretty pretty solid, except for Alyssa Katoa misses with concussion after the uh, Dylan, Dylan Walker um, head slam. Uh, so Tom Eisenhuth comes on to the, would come in to, for, for Katoa. Um, and this is the beauty of what the Rabbitohs have been tossing up. They've basically been able to keep the same team, yeah. but Liam Knight comes back from that horrific injury in New Great South Great work. I'm, I'm proud of Liam Knight. He's a good man, and he's been through, he's been through a journey now. And I, hopefully he um, solidifies himself in that 17 and just plays well. I'm not sure. You know, he's been probably playing Reggie's for about three or four weeks, I think. I think at least a couple. Yeah, so he, needed, he needed that, you know. Like, um, but I'm, I'm so proud of the kid. He's been very vulnerable in interviews and yeah, you know, awesome. saying what he's been through with his childhood and everything Shout like out that. To, uh, and, I, and I and I love that. I love that with these young kids. They're very, you know, they're self-aware. They're very, they're very self-aware, but the, you know, they're, they're not f- afraid to talk about their feelings now. Mm. You know, it's not frowned upon. Like, oh, you gotta be this NRL player and tough and this and that. Like, it's like, no, we all go through the same shit. You know what I mean? Like Nico Hines. Shout out to Nico Hines and respect for Nico Hines for doing that as well. Coming out talking about his, uh, you know, his childhood and all that kind of stuff. It's like. It's fucking, it's, 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 I don't know, refreshing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, and it's so inspirational to these it young, is, yeah. younger kids, younger kids, even in the NRL or younger kids aspiring to be an NRL player or just people in general. You know, you, they, I think they look at rugby league players like, oh yeah, oh, you get to play on TV and you're like, you know, you're Superman and all that kind of stuff. Like, bro, you only see a microcosm of us in 80, 80 minutes. You don't know what happens when the lights go off. You don't know what happens when your TV turns off then you got to get back to reality. You know, a lot of these kids have had a fucking, you know, pretty ordinary upbringing and all that kind of stuff. We're and a that, working and class game, We are a working class game. We've all been through our dramas, um, you know, when we are younger. I mean, like, even myself personally, we went through all that sort of shit. But back when I was playing, it wasn't... You didn't have a platform or you, it, wasn't, mm. it was pretty frowned upon if you're going to come out and say, yeah, I, I suffer from this, this and this because it wasn't fucking like that. It's just like, yeah. just get the... You play, you play the game hard, you train hard, party hard, fucking drink hard, fucking do everything, just like 100%. So mental health wasn't really an issue with us, but you didn't even know that if, even if you did have a few dramas, no one talked you about didn't it. even know. Mm. You just fucking rolled. You know what I mean? So I was like, I, I, I commend all these younger kids, advocates for mental health and what they're doing is, is fucking great because like the next generation, they're going to be like that as well. Yeah, you know. So, um, well done and congrats to Liam Knight. Yeah, congrats, Good Knighty. Man. I've known um, Knighty. I go back to my yeah, manly days when Knighty come, when he was come back through. Yeah, me and him had a bit of a disagreement too back in the day, but uh, you know, just like he's a young kid who was, uh, you know, trying to make the game again. I have just seen the growth in him. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we talk about little spats. You know what's happening to Manly? Like me and Knighty nearly had one of those back in the day too, around trainings and shit like yeah. that. But so stoked for him. Um, I've seen him a number of times since, and. Uh, yeah, love what he does. Shout out to I think Jake Jai Duke, Lukey. Um is Jake Duke, Jake. sorry, Jake. Jake Duke. Um JJ. he does he does, JJ. He, does a, uh, <laughs> he does a great job at Fox with all these yeah. sorts of um interviews that he does and he's and he's waving the flag. Apologies, Jake. Um I reached out to him actually after that potty as well. Um but back to the game, Mace. I think I'm big on momentum and I'm big on Souths when they have momentum. Souths are gonna pump them. I think the Rabbitohs will win and comfortably. Do you reckon comfortably? 13 yeah. plus? Yep. All right. There you go. OG, 13 plus. We'll see what happens tomorrow night in the game of the round. I think it'll be closer than that. Um, I just worry about that little fucking number six on the other side. He scares me. The Prez, yeah, Ken Munster. The Prez. We've got some stuff coming with Prez too that I'll announce next Monday. All right. Moving on to the Battle of the Dirty Mergers, the West Tigers versus St. George uh, Illawarra yeah. Dragons. It's a coin flip for the wrong uh. reasons because they're both awful. <laughs> The West Tigers are $1.95. The Dragons are even worse. Eh, $1.85, minus one and a half. And if you're going to get a point in this game, I guess you're going to take it because they've been coming for it on the tab. Hopefully hopefully our flights are on Sunday right when this game's on. (laughs) 
So we miss it, yeah. and then we get the games and we come yeah, back. We'll we just don't watch, have to it watch it on it. KO Mini. Yeah, <laughs> DJ Tiger Town watches it for us and tells us what happened. Yeah. All right. uh, I, 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 I mean, I like. I'm the excited tig- for the Tigers. I like, I like this the for Tigers' grit. I yeah. like um, how they just stuck in there. Like they beat Penrith, man. As I said, I said it on um, Monday's show. Like if they don't get any confidence out of this and think they can beat anyone, you just beat Penrith. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? I don't care, I don't care if it was in uh, Bathurst. I don't care if it was pissing down rain. You still won. So those guys coming up here against St. George, who's been not too bad. You know what I mean? St. George are tough. They'll, they'll fucking come at you nonstop. Mm. Mm. Um, they should be taking a lot of confidence out of that. And they should probably, they, they should win. The Tigers should the win. The Tigers should win. <laughs> I don't that's, know, that's I don't know I why. Think, that's something I didn't think would hear this year. Um, a few on the changes though, mate. Skipper Benny Hunt is set to switch from halfback to hooker after spending training what? on Wednesday exclusively at dummy half. That is because they've got Jaden Sullivan who was named in the jersey of number 14. So they're expected to drop off Jacob Little and uh, Zach Lomax will drop out of the team with Max Fingai and Sullivan brought in. So... Um, that's the big news. I actually don't mind. I think the Dragons are a better team with Ben Hunt at nine. I think Hunty's best position is nine, Mace. Mm. What do you reckon? I've been saying this only, for years. Only because they've got an ordinary nine. Was it uh, Little? Little and, and Moses and By, who yeah, is, again, think, he's, he's Moses, a makeshift nine where's, himself. Where's Moses? Yeah, M- Moses is, See, sta- Moses is, Moses is, is starting. Um, he's a victim of his own versatility. Yeah. I reckon and he's a better so, 14 at this point of his career. Yeah, I just I, I, don't, I don't know. I just think he, I think he can play. I think he can play half. I think he can play five eight. I think he can play fullback. You know what I mean? Like Sloan is Sloan's got a lot of talent, right? Mm. But the inconsistency, and I can see why they dropped him last year. You have a look at our game that we played against him. I think it wasn't great, his best think, game for sure. I think he's a great kid. I think he's got this, but like he's only twenty years old, right? And what what the what the dragons are trying to do is try and like just blood him in. You know what I mean? Like because he's not the toughest kid. You know what I mean? Like, as I said, you kick to him. There's 12 people down there on the kick chase. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you kick, if you kick left, we're kicking to Fango all the time, knowing that he's going to have to have play two. Yeah. Did he take play two? No, he passed it to the centre. You know what I mean? And then he went to dummy half again. So, like, the, the toughness, the mental toughness that he has to start getting, once he gets that, a little bit more, like a little bit more muscle, a little bit more Five like kilos. aggressiveness, you know, because his talent is fucking sublime. He broke that uh, Anzac game apart. Yeah, exactly. The, when he well, so when he when he's on, he'll he, he's a confidence player, mm. and he'll go at it. He'll go at it. He'll go at it. He'll attack. But like when it's a grind, mm. if you he, give him a sniff, he'll take it. Yeah, but if, but if you, you but back to, back and forth, back and, and forth, and the dra- you know, like the Tigers will probably do that. If Are they, they if capable of the Tigers? Well. Brooksy, that's the difference. Brendan Wakeham, That's he's more difference. of a he's more of a, a game managing six, yeah. so like it'll be up to him to put him. I, I'm with you, mate. I'm, look, I'm not. I like, con- the, I like the Dragons. Yeah, I think the Tigers should win because they're going off that win against Penrith. I wouldn't like, say should, but I'm on the Tigers as well. I'll take I'm the Tigers. I'm I'll, I'll, and if I can get a point head start in this, I'll take it. So give me the plus one and a half, mm. and I'll take the Tigers. All right, second game, second last game, and second game of Sunday. Sydney Roosters take on the North Queensland Cowboys. Mm. Sydney Roosters are dollar twenty four OG favourites against the Cowboys, who have been. Awful as well, $4.10. The line is plus 11.5 because you know what? They're coming for the Roosters at minus 11.5. Obviously, some news around the the Roosters as well with Brandon Smith is 50-50, they reckon. Um, And Toops, uh, he misses out as well. So it looks like Drew Hutchinson will play center. Mudders. Mudders Hutchinson is playing in the centers. Here's how I think it will go for the Roosters too without any inside info. I dare say um, Hutchinson will defend at three men mm. in, in defense and then move out to centers and attack and Joe Manu will do, do vice versa. Because yeah. remember how uh, Hutchinson got dusted a couple of weeks ago by yeah. um, the Melbourne Storm. Um, as for the Cowboys team... Um, our boy Hylam Lukey Stowe behind. He returns from a hammy injury. Uh, Chad Townsend, 50-50. Jeremiah Nanai, he got suspended for four games for that hip drop. And Benny Hampton and Jake Burke are thereabouts. I think it's going to be a tough one for the Cowboys, AJ. And, yeah. and the punters believe that too because they're coming for the Roosters. $1.85 yeah, minus I don't, 11 I don't, and think, I don't think you're on a chance. It's, uh, I don't know. We said it last week, eh? Yeah. I'm done. Yeah, done. Put that, a line was, that was it. That was it. Um, that last game, I thought they, if they could beat Cronulla de- at Cronulla, then they're on. You know what I mean? They just won that game against the Knights. I'm like, okay, we'll just give them a chance. And like, they just they're just a totally different team than what they were last year. They were so defensive based, defensive orientated, and they used to hit. They were hitting in bunches and like just like 
everything was on. Like, if you're Todd Payton, you're like, what the fuck is happening? You pretty much got the same team, but but Taumalolo has been in and out, whatever. Yeah. But like, you still expect them to win most of these games, and they just haven't. I think if they don't win this week, they're definitely not going to make the eight. Yeah, I think I've yeah I've almost put a line through on base. I, I thought the Roosters were impressive last week. Fourteen 0 against the Warriors Roosters in those conditions. Fiz- physically, they were trying to bash the Roosters, and you know what it's like, mate. You don't get to win every game pretty, even no. if it's against the Warriors. They're not that sort of team this year. And fourteen 0 in mm. those conditions, I thought that was a great sign for the Roosters. I feel like the Roosters are about to go on a run. Yeah, and I, like, I like the bench: Crichton, Tupanua, Lodge, yep. Turpin. Shout out to the Butcher Brothers who have kept them out too. Yeah. I, ass- I assume I'll give him another three, four weeks. I assumed that Crichton and Satili would just come straight back in. No, maybe no, one no, game. No, no, no. They need to like at least four or five games. Well, I reckon Egan's. I reckon Egan's going to keep his spot. I think Nat's been the more consistent for him, but Egan's got the bigger upside. Egan's um, the left side back row. Yep. And that's um that's um Crichton's that's position. Crichton. So I don't think he's going to keep that long. Yeah. You think Crichton will come oh, back? Oh, well, Crichton plays with his potential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's a, at the end of the year. He's a starting back row for New South Wales, and he's starting back row for Australia. So, you know, Egan Butcher needs to wait his time. Yep. But all it's right. great because I said, iron sharpens iron. Roosters? Yeah, Roosters. Yeah, Roosters easy. Um, all right, the last game of the round is the Gold Coast Titans versus Parramatta Eels. Gold Coast at $2.90. Mm. Underdogs head-to-head. Parramatta, $1.42. I think people, the punters. This could like, be the game of the round. They like what they seen out of Parramatta last week. So the Gold Coast, Gold Coast were impressive against Manly as well, OG. Minus 7.5, and, and it's actually been pumped into $1.85 with our friends at the Tab, OG. And therefore, pushing out the Titans. A massive question mark around our boy Fozzie, who was, I don't know how he finished the game. He's a dog. And there's, I've been telling you about this kid for a while, uh, OG. Keno Kinney, young kid, the young little moldy boy who's been part of the system for the last couple of years. There is chat that AJ Brimson will miss, obviously, with his hammy. He pulled up stiff uh, straight away in that game. And obviously, Fozzie battled it out. So, Jaden, there's talk about Jaden Campbell going to six, Keno Kinney playing fullback. Or oh, if he sorry. does. So a lot of changes, and I think that's why the punters uh, are getting around the Eels, who bring in uh, mid-season recruit Andrew Davey, comes back to the Eels. He was at the Dogs there, Mace. And that pushes Bryce Cartwright and Ryan Madison both to the bench. Uh, or Ryan Madison, who is returning from illness. He missed last week as well. Um, how do you see this game going, OG? I like, uh, I like the Titans. Ooh, you like, I like the Titans? Yeah, I like, uh, I like what they're doing. I want Foran to play, but if yeah. Foran's out, then yeah. they're going to be in trouble. You, you, don't, you don't want anything if Foz is out? No, nah, If you find out on the day with yeah. the punters? On the okay. day, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, be swip, I'll, be swatching, I'll be switching to Parramatta. Yep. But um, I just like the way the Titans play. Mm. I like Fafita. Fafita and Tino are playing good Fafita's for you. Fafita's on. And, and you know Fod- who's playing Fod- Fodawaker? Fodawaker. Oh, yeah. So Fodawaker's like, he's, he's doing the dirty work, man. He's yep. not getting all the accolades or anything like that, but he's fucking going hard. He's yep. getting those quick play the balls. Sammy, Philip Sammy's getting in behind him, yes. all that kind of stuff. They've got a lot of talent. Jaden Campbell's got so much talent. I think he's going to probably like try and go, you know what, I'm that dude. Well, they've got big I'm questions now. Brimo, Jade, they've got Jaden Campbell and this Ken O'Kinney kid. Yeah. You'll see, Mace, he's fucking, mm. they love him up there. So big decisions coming with, can't keep all of them. No. So it would be up to a couple of these boys to step up. No, it would be good. I mean, uh, Parramatta, who did they play last week? Par- Parramatta. Parramatta pumped Newcastle. Yeah, but I'm not really taking much out of that. No. Titans yeah. are good, though. They'll throw a lot of football at you, and they're, they're playing with confidence. They beat Brookie. They beat Manly at Brookvale. Yep. That takes a lot of confidence. Yep. All right. I, I, think just, want, I just want Fozzie to play. I think you've talked me into plays, it. Yep. They've got that team, mate. They have that team. All right, Parramatta heads ahead, but I'm, I'm leaning towards the plus seven and a half if you get a bit of a start. Ready to go, Lukey. <clears throat> All right, let's get on to the grateful eights for Ooh. this weekend. Mace, I'm going your boy. He's on fire at the moment. Give me Jake Avarillo, Bulldogs against nice. Canberra. I'm on the wonder boy himself. We're in Brisbane. We're at Suncorp. Who's better to step up? Reese Walsh. You're not going to do it? Oh, okay, sweet. Reese Walsh. Let's do it again. Let's start again. <laughs> I can just use this. <clears throat> I was doing this with the camera. Okay, all right, let's roll on to the Grateful Eight. So if you're watching this and we're skipping over, let's go again. Jake Averillo, your guy, he's on fire at the moment, Mace. Bulldogs against Canberra. Jake Averillo is $2.80. Second game of Friday night, Reese Walsh is Suncor Stadium. This is his house. He's going to hit this one, $2.20 about Reese Walsh. And he's also in my LPC bet. The Warriors versus Penrith. I told you I like the Waz with the starts. So give me Ooh. Dallin Watanet Zelezniak on the wing for the Warriors. As for Cronulla, he scored his first try of the season, even though he's been setting them up for fun. Sio Sifa Talakai on the big game, uh, Melbourne Storm versus the Rabbitohs. 
I like both sixes, but I'm going to go Cody Walker because I'm on South this week at $2.50. As for the dirty merger, the Tigers versus St. George Illawarra Dragons, give me Stefano Mauso Ikamanu at mm. $8. And we'll go Joseph Manu for the Roosters against North Queensland. I think they play nice and direct against the Cowboys. To finish it off, Mitchie Moses, he can find the line, mm. especially up here at Suncorp. I just, you know, I, I picture him uh, streaking through the middle and at $2.70, give me Mitchie Moses against the, Par- uh, sorry, against the Gold Coast Titans. All right, Mace, here we are. The Levels Punters Club's Bets Friends channel special. You can find it on the Tab app. Go and find us, the LPC, basically. Come in and have a look. And my bet for this week is the Warriors plus 10.5 against the Panthers. OG, I think they keep it close. And we're at Suncorp Stadium, like I said before. Big name players step up, and he's a kid on the rise. This is time to cement his name as a Broncos. All right. Uh, Stalwart for this year. Give me Reese Walsh in the first 60 minutes. That is equal to $6. Remember, that's a max bet of $25. That's the LPC of this week. You like it, OG? Yeah, I like it. I like it. All right. To finish off, as always, we want everyone to be playing safe during this footy season. So please keep front of mind, what are you really gambling with? And if you need free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelpline.org.au. And just remember, you can find all current LPC bets with my Anytime Jam in the Bets Friends banner on the Tab app. Enjoy the footy.